And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Monday, 6 p.m. It's The Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder in New York City and all the way in the City of Angels. Sweet, sweet Big J. Okerson. I was, uh, was going to say, should I do... The- uh, should I do the, um, can you guys hear me good? Oh, I can hear you fantastic. You hear me fantastic? I, I feel like you're breathing down my neck, like I got mm. your warm, oh, you're warm. There you go. Oh, Ooh, there's my baby. Yeah. Um, can I do the whole, the reintro now with saying, hey everyone, it's three o'clock and you know what time it is. Oh. Time for the bonfire. 3 p.m. You would have driven it, a trucker would have taken his truck off, his rig off the road. <laughs> like, I, I went back in time. I took it too fast down 25, and I went back in time. Dan, what's the future like? Well, right now it's dark and cold. Are the Eagles still in first? All right, we get it. We get it. We've got a good <laughs> football team. I think we can get that. I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan. It's not so hot right now. Oh, but listen, but they're making a lot of a lot of social commentary going on. Hey, huh? that's cool. I'm glad they're changing society. What's your team doing, Jay? Winning games? That's for hey, who, who needs, We're changing the future. Who needs a win when you have a mulatto taking a knee? Oh, wow. You are from the 50s. <laughs> You're like, wow, right there, that's a mixed baby. Like, oh, oh. Colin oh. Kaepernick, well, that's the reason he's being so temperamental is that he's high yellow. He got Creole blood. Um... <laughs> Los Angeles, you were in Toronto, then Los Angeles, which is probably the most polar opposite of two cities. Oh, boy. Yeah. Lucked out, though. Had one of those flights where I just conked almost right away, woke up here. Do you do edibles? Which was nice. I've, are you one of the people that does edibles on flights? No, not on flights. I do. And it's either perfect or terrifying. Yeah, it can go bad. Huh? No, you know, I didn't have to. We were up. Uh, we stayed up for the whole thing. Oh, you guys Got stayed up there. the night before the flight? Yeah, when we got, I mean, we had to go to the airport at five thirty in the morning. When we got to the airport, which, by the way, I hate when you have to like bicker with somebody. They weren't shitty about it, but you know, when you have to bicker with somebody about your getting like, what time you're supposed to get to the airport. Like people who don't travel a lot, who do a whole bunch of like, uh, I hate that. Oh man, that airport, like you can get there fifteen minutes before your flight, yeah, and yeah, then you're like, that's, that's not possible. You're like, yeah, it doesn't make sense at all, man. They go, what? What are you checking a bag? And you're like, yeah. They go, I mean, then you get there like, then get there like forty minutes before your flight. Like, that's that's uh, never the, the flight case. boards thirty minutes before the flight. So I well, probably... I'm t- what I'm telling you, we left five thirty for an eight a.m. flight. Okay. And when I and when I tell you that. As we walked up to the gate, they were seating our zone. Perfect. You nailed it. It is perfect, but that was to, they were trying to get us to leave over an hour later than we left. No. With that whole, like, it's Wednesday morning at an airport. It was crazy at that airport. Does, I've had a bizarre week. I didn't get to tell you much of my insane week of travel. It was things fell apart. I made a multiple thousand-dollar mistake. Wait, you made molt that's a th- so thousands of dollar mistake? Thousands. Was it like dollars. plane trains and automobiles? Did a new friendship blossom? Did you learn a lot about yourself? No new friendships blossomed. I continue to l- l- my lifelong hatred of Delta. Okay, well, as a De- Delta Sky Miles member, I'm going to have to stop you right there and not sully the good name <laughs> on the relationship I've worked on establishing over the past three years. I have a lot of gripes. I have a lot of gr- uh, gear grinding. Oh, that this boy. Week. Get ready. Here comes Op-Ed J. Well, Jay's going to let the it. world know. I'll tell you, Chevy still shoving it hard up the ass. Chevy... Where the car has not been in uh, Carla's possession now for over a month, they go, you know what? This is pretty crazy. We want to do something for you. We, we want to get- Frankenstein this car. They literally go, we want to do something for you. We want to do something. Let's get you something so we can like, fix this and make it a better deal for you. And then they had her come in two days, uh, not in a row, but two separate days, to basically all they did was just try to get her into paying... Or get me, I guess, into paying like another like six years. To like come back uh... for a new car. They go, they go. Sorry about getting you that bunk car. Trade it in. You're upside down on the loan. We'll give you some, you know, some incentive points to get it, and then we'll get you into something for, you know, 
Let's call it high six hundreds a month what, for the next for the next seventy two months. Like, why don't you uh, Why don't you come back in tomorrow and uh, bring your wallet? Because uh, we're gonna fuck you harder. I, when you said they did, we're gonna do something for her. I imagine she was gonna go into the dealership, uh, and there's just gonna be a box, like a wrapped box, and there's just gonna be a sweater. I'm like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, we you got, got a nice sweater with a Chevy logo on yeah, it. Yeah, huh? It's almost fall. Perfect time for a Chevy sweater. So Chevy continues to. to Grease up that fist and shove it far up into my shitter. We should do real commercials. We should do honest commercials for products because I feel like that's the. I was just in Dunkin' Donuts getting our coffee and they have a fake radio station and it fucked me up because it was coming out of Semi Sonic's closing time and they're like, all right, that was Semi Sonic and uh, also don't forget the newest treat on the racks. <laughs> they started talking about <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, what the fuck is this? All right, that was Semi Sonic closing time. Also, our Reese's peanut butter squares. Or some of the most delicious treats you'll ever have. You're listening to Dunkin' Donut Radio. I was like, this is <laughs> fucked up. You can't stay here, but on your way out, buy yourself a crawler. Everyone knows it's blues time. It's, it's Double Up Wednesday's Dunkin' Donut Radio. Get Double Dunk. a bear claw. My career is officially over. I work for a Dunkin' Donuts radio station. Get yourself a bear claw, and while you're at it, sit back to the smooth sounds of the wallflowers. Here comes Jacob Dylan and the wallflowers, and there goes my dignity. It's Dunkin' <laughs> Donuts radio. We're uh, But we should do honest commercials, because you hate Chevy, or as I call him, Chevy. Chevy. Um... And yeah, you should just do it. Be like, hi. You know, like when they play that motivational music behind it, and it's a walk and talk with you. Yeah, I hate them. They hate. They hate me, and I hate them. Do you they think they do? That would be great if we if we got somehow into the office building of Chevy, and there was just a picture of you on a dartboard. If this guy shows up, do not let him in. Uh, I went to a comedy I mean, I- show once in New York, and this guy pecked on me the entire show. So I made sure <laughs> we sold him a bunk car, and we're putting his wife through the ringer. We did get her a nice sweater, though. Dude, I'm blown away by their lack of, like, give a shit that we were sold a bad product that has been... They've put... The company has put thousands of miles on that car because we never have the car. It's always, do you think they're jewelry riding with it? Like, do you think they're going... Do you think yeah. there's, like, it's every weekend they're on an adventure in your car? I hope it's, like, also, like, romantic stuff. Like, yeah. took my girl to the lake in that car. Like, like, like these... All the workers there have great memories of my oh, car. Man, it's gonna... Hey, bro, it's going to be tough to get rid of this car because uh, my girlfriend and I actually, uh, she gave birth to my son in the back seat. I was there. It was one of the messiest births I've ever seen in my life. And my mother actually was a uh, was a baby doctor. It's been passed down. It's been passed down through families in the office. <laughs> They're like, oh, my God, I lost my virginity after prom in that car. It's like, well, Tommy turns 16 next month. I guess we're going to give him Jay Chevy Traverse for a while. <laughs> oh, a good Mom, car. do I get the Traverse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that's your brother's car until he goes to college. Now, Jay's going to have to drive it for three days. Then we're going to flip that switch that fucks everything up. Does it still have that cigarette burn from David Tell in it? Yeah. That's a real, that's an official David, Tur- David Tell cigarette burn. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been officially fucked by them. I, I, mean, don't, I don't think there's been... any reason for you to ever... I hope you become one of the most famous people on earth, and then you get to have one of those meetings where Chevy's like, hey, we really want you to be our sponsor, and then you can just have a tell-em-off moment. You can just have your fucking, I'm gonna fuck you, I'm gonna... fuck you, you're a cool moment. I'm going to do rich guy, make him do stuff. Like, yeah, hop in that Traverse, drive it into a wall. If you survive, four, I'll do your read. I want your four leading salesmen to drive my Traverse <laughs> as fast as possible into that wall. <laughs> you can push the brakes last second. If they work, which if. I'll tell you this, <laughs> most of the time they do not. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes they just shut off. I was I was walking. We were right on the phone right as I was walking into the building. And you know that we come into work as all the business people are letting out. Mm-hmm. And we have to scan in, or it makes that crazy fucking alarm noise with our passes. Learn that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, by trying to sneak me in, <laughs> and then the fucking alarm went off, and they're like, "No, no, 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 we no." Went, we went dick to ball. We went. Uh, we went a uh, dick to butt. Yeah, and then, uh, and then we got caught anyway. Yeah, they still caught us. But so I am walking into the building, and an elevator lets out of all those finance people, and I tap my badge on the the bar, and it opens in, and a woman starts walking. A woman walks through, mm-hmm. but like goes to walk, and I'm and like I'm I'm like oh the bars are facing that way, and she does the thing like I'm I'm an asshole. 
She's like, oh, well, then I guess I'll just use the other one. And I go, yeah, you should probably do that. She's like, well, that's rude. I was like, no, you're fucking rude. So then I, I wish you were here because I just had one of those R, uh, zero to 60 soda moments. Yeah, by my, zero to 60 soda. By myself in an elevator with my ears popping. I was very upset. <laughs> and I needed my big J. You, you don't want to be around when Vanilla Dan turns to zero to 60 soda. When Vanilla Dan goes to cookies and cream, get out of the way. Because he has some chunks of anger in him. <laughs> when we're dirtying up the cream. Oh. Oh, you want a off-white vanilla tan? You will not be happy, good lady. She's not, you will a good not lady. like that. Oh yeah, of course they're all and those people when they get done work, they're so. Like I said that's the that's the happy hour folk though. Yep. You know that's the like I'm just trying to get out there and maybe like suck a stranger's dick or something. I just want to do some crazy shots for two hours and then maybe bang someone that works at Merrill Lynch. What do you have? Anything that's purple. Oh, dude, that was the worst because when I was a waiter, I worked in Midtown and we were by all those things and um, I would do lunches so I could do stand up at night. But my shift would end at 530 and the dinner people like there was like a meeting before the dinner shift pre shift as Christine would remember it being called. <laughs> And uh, I would be, dude, you want to know zero to 60 soda. That was at like 4 p.m. when the restaurant was empty and I was done for like the whole shift and just tired. Mm -hmm. And then people would just start coming in and I'd be like, no. I was always like Kurt Russell in Tombstone. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> just walking across with with salsa and chips. It was the fucking worst because that was the happy hour crew. That's got to be the hour, too, when you get start getting called guy by people. Chief hey, guy. Hoss. Hey, guy. Or they would just walk in and they blow by the uh, they would blow by the hostess because the hostesses are we all know they're the idiots of the restaurant world. They're just hot. <laughs> they're there to walk you to a table. That's all they are. They're just like. Hi, is there four of you? Are all four of you here? Okay, we can this, go now. <laughs> is this everybody in your super handsome party? You guys look awesome. You guys ready to have a super awesome great time? Cool, follow me through this crowd. <laughs> They're just like shitty Sherpas. Just and then like, you just know, and then she just walks, and you know, like four guys just follow, staring at her ass the whole yeah. time. And she goes, this is, restaurant was established in 1994 under the guidance of Steve Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Formerly known as La Maganette, this was the restaurant where Al Capone was shot. The um, feng shui in here is perfect. They say architecture is modern to postmodern. Anyways, <laughs> follow me. I don't know how to add, or else I'd be a waiter. <laughs> they always, dude. I would always lose my shit on hostesses if they double sat me. I'd be like, do you know time and space? I told one hostess I was going to take all my tips for that week and enroll her in a community college physics program. <laughs> just so she would know time and space. And, and she, then you fucked that chick. And then we got married. Um, but then it was funny to watch all the hostesses find out I was a comic. And they're like, he's a psycho. Like, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way he's funny. But they would just, like, a lot of times those business guys would just completely bypass <laughs> and then just go sit down. But that's why you made me think of it when you said the chief thing. Because they'd just grab a chair at a table and look at me as I was in the weeds. And they'd be like, chief, is this table cool? Can I sit here? And I'm like, hey, where the fuck is that hostess? God damn it. Like, hey, bud. Yeah. Hey, bud. Hey. I'll, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what drives me absolutely nuts, and I don't think it's men with any kind of harm. And, and you know this uh, comedian in New York named uh, Ray DeVito? Yeah, Ray, yeah, right? yeah. Um, right when he texts me mm -hmm. or messages me in any way to ask me to do his shows, or something, he calls me fella. Oh, boy. And I fucking... He, it makes me. It makes me always angry at him for a few minutes, and then I just realize I bet that's just kind of his dumb thing. Well, here's but, the thing, it, it, man. Does that suck? That's a shitty like. Turn. Does he realize he, goes, he sounds like a prostitute down by the Navy docks? <laughs> like, hey, fella. Hey, boys. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Want to take a ride on the Ray Express? <laughs> hey, fellas. I'm just over here spinning my pearls, waiting for a nice young suitor to walk up. Ooh, I'll let you butt fuck me if you wear, let me wear one of your sailor hats. Oh, dude, fella. I hate it. Can we start using fella? Should we adopt fella to piss people off? Maybe hey, that. Maybe we call him our, our guest fella. If we don't like him. Hey, fella. Hey, fella. If we don't like somebody, oh. fella is a good word. Oh, hey, yeah. Fella. It's definitely, it's, here's the thing. It seems passive aggressive, but we're not in passive aggressive situations. No. So he we, just calls me fella. Hey, fella. Oh, what? so can, let me finish telling you about this travel. Oh, Travapalooza 2016? Was, yeah, my, the shit part was with the first we had the thing going on with the car, which sucks. So while I'm on Oddball, 
I'm dealing with a, a teary Carla at points because she's going through it where they're just basically... Because she's a huge oddball fan, and she knows yeah. the tour's coming to an end. Yeah, she's upset about this whole thing. She's, when, is, when are we ever going to get Jim Jeffries and John Oliver in a room together again? <laughs> when is, uh, I need to know an outdoor amphitheater tour of Sebastian. When's yeah, the next are, time that's going to happen? Next summer? I can't are we, wait that long. When are we going to have Sebastian, Maniscalco, and Dane Cook sit awkwardly apart from each other and not, and not hang out at all? together for a full day when is that gonna happen um it's really not a hang this year man no no i i'm i'm enjoying very much bullshitting with uh tom segura's on a bunch of the gigs he's I, fucking I like awesome him. i and love he's segura. awesome and he's hilarious yeah, yeah yeah really funny dude his uh, uh my mo- uh your mom's what's it called your mom's house is the podcast with him and his wife which is hilarious so check that out yeah tom he's uh, great Tom's really funny and, and a, just a genuine sweet guy. Yeah, I met him in Montreal in like 2012, very hungover at Starbucks, and then we just started walking around, and he was as cool as shit. I was like, "Who is this oh, yeah. guy?" And then yeah, we just bullshit backstage a little bit. But oddball, um, I went to do the Texas ones. Yeah, uh, I hosted I, I hosted main stage on two of them. I saw. I got a picture from our friend Samantha. 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 She sent me a lovely picture of you in your Eagles jersey. Which, oh yeah, when we were up on that, uh, that thing is crazy. In that's Austin, from the, Texas, backstage, there's a, uh, it's a Formula One racetrack. So if you you could take an elevator up to this, it's only one, it's only one level. The elevator goes. It's it. It's like it goes from the bottom all the way to the top. Uh, just like our careers, Jay. Uh, I'm uh, all uh, the way up. Uh, Nothing can stop us. We're all uh, the way up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we uh, go up to the top of this thing. It's the half the floor of it is glass, so you're looking straight down. That's terrible. At your own certain death, it's pretty scary. But uh, yeah, I, I hosted main stage out in Austin and Dallas, and uh, after Austin, I was flying to Toronto. I had two juicy. I had a layover, so okay. I uh, first class of the whole way. I was doing. I sprung for it because I was like, you know what? Let me be comfortable. It's Semi long flight, first class J. Yeah, first class J. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, like first class. I imagine instead that'd be great if we could start. If first class J could be a real thing, where you start wearing jackets with uh, like a smoking jacket. Oh, ascots. Oh man, I could pull off ascots. Can we start calling you first class J, Okerson? Sometimes. If the, show, if the show's able to buy me an ascot and uh, like a Captain and Tennille sailor hat, I'll wear that all the time. Jacob, I'm looking right like in your na- fucking like face. A, make like this a nautical hat. I know we can't get me a computer uh, in the station <laughs> I want to sit, so if we can oh. just get me an ascot and a nautical hat. Side would be note, before we get back to you riding the elevator from hell, uh, Hits One has let it be known that this is their studio. What did they do? They brought in Lysol wipes. They brought in two giant banners. They brought in a couch. A couch? Yeah. A mother. There's a couch in the studio. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy everything in the studio. Well <laughs> when I get back, let I'm me just go warn ahead. you to not touch the couch because someone's skinny Swedish ass is gonna be all over that. Who's? Dance owner. Oh yeah? I'm Swedish and Irish, but you know You gonna rub your ass all over it? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking maybe I'll just bone Christine on it for the sake of just making it fucking gross for everyone else. You should. Jacob just gave double thumbs up, which was kind of maybe weird, I'll just, and he's biting his bottom lip. Maybe I'll just take an HJ from her, or we can just, like, just batch off on it. Yeah, uh, and I, I'll just I'll sit at the desk, and you guys can do it behind me so I don't have to watch, but I could comment mm-hmm. on it. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you to come. Jay's coming in. His form looks strong. Form yeah. looks strong. Stamina's hey, good. Stamina's yeah. good. Breathing's going up. Christine seems to be exhaling, showing a good amount of effort being given on this hege. <laughs> and Jay is close. He's close. That's it. He's leaning his head back. We no. have an no. orgasm. It's no. all over the brand new couch. Christine no. is laughing and splashing around like a Puerto Rican child in a fire hydrant in the middle of summer in Harlem. No. And that new couch is ruined. <laughs> i tell you what, I did smack I one out. I didn't know if that was Christine or the drop. I promise you. It took me to look at Lou to go, is that Christine or the drop? That last laugh. <laughs> I did I did uh, smack one out this last week to a keyword search, huge, like, load hand jobs. Oh, pimple, mm-hmm. pimple pushers. Weird. Very weird to, to be interested in that, but I was. Okay. You know, this is more Vanilla Dan. But mm-hmm. I searched 
gym clothing. <laughs> My keyword was Let's see a girl in a nice racer back tank top. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And I'll tell you, it was very enjoyable. It was very uh, by the enjoyable. Way, uh, by right. the way, yoga pants is its own uh, search, like, keyword uh, category on Lobster Tube. See, we're making progress. Yoga pants. Yo that's a very vanilla Dan topic. Um, what was girls, say? Far girls farting in yoga pants? Hilarious. Because you see the bubble build. Do you really? Um, Can you yeah. please bring up a video of that? Someone? Jacob? Uh, do it, just do it there in that studio, because I'll be honest with you. I'm secluded enough over here that I will jerk off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? So you're back in the hell elevator. Yeah. So, wait, what are you doing? Oh, I'm Googling farting. And, uh, Jacob, I'm on it. I want to say what's going on here with uh, Delta still, yes? Yeah, but you're also in the hell elevator in, on Oddball. So you're dealing with Carla crying. You're on the oh, yeah, elevator. No, no, well, that was the, the elevator was awesome. That, that, that look how things awesome. That was a side note. No, but all, during Oddball, I'm dealing with Carla's going the Chevy and dealing with that and going through all that nonsense where they're saying we're going to help you out and basically they're just trying to sell us another car. Um, then so I go to the hotel two hours. I didn't sleep at all, but I'm getting ready to take these two first class Dan flights to Toronto. Yeah, with a one hour layover. I realized early in the weekend that I forgot my passport. Big deal, my fault. One hundred percent my fault. Big whoop, my deal. So what I do, what I do have is my passport card. Which when I got my new passport, I got this card that's supposed to be good for Canada and Mexico. Okay. I get to the airport four fifteen in the morning for uh, my six fifteen flight. Yeah. Uh, they need me to scan my passport at the kiosk for this one. I'm like, that's Delta. I, I so, so, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I don't need, I don't have my passport. I have this card. Can't really scan that. So I go, oh, let me just go up to the, the counter, go up to the counter. This guy, this guy was so excited to tell me that it wasn't going to work, that he needs a passport. You need a passport. I can't put you on this plane. I go, well, I need a passport to get into Canada and my girlfriend's meeting me in Toronto, like on this side of customs, you know? Yeah. I'm like, so I'll have it when I get there. It's, it's you know, it's my problem. You can send me to Canada. It's up to them to let me in or not. So it's my problem. The guy says he absolutely will not let me on the plane without a passport. I make sort of a stink and just kind of have like a nasty, like, fucking departure from him. Then I go, now I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do? Did you what am I going to do? Wait, but let me ask you this. Did you white lady him? Were you like, can I speak to your manager? Can I speak no. to your manager? Not Who, even. Who's I just your told superior? Me, I just said he was fucking. You're fucking me here, man. You happy? You're fucking me. And he goes, yeah. Yeah. And what do you, yeah. Ugh, put on these yoga pants and fart for me. Fuck yeah. <laughs> like, Delta Fuck is yeah. aggressive. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so I look on the board. Uh, 700 bucks I can go pay right now to get on a 6 p.m. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Sorry. 6 a.m. flight to JFK. Because now I have to go to... to I got to go to New York. Wait, what? I have to just bail on these tickets. I got to eat these tickets because I got to go to New York, and I, I have to get here like in a timely fashion. So their their next flight to New York was like at noon or something. It just wasn't going to work. So I was like, and and Christine, I got her flight to go. Uh, we were going to meet when I got there, so she's still asleep when I'm tr figuring this all out. Yeah. So I pay a zillion dollars to buy. A, I mean, I have. I haven't seen a ticket purchased at an airport since the movie Airplane. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know you could do that. That's pretty cool. I mean, like going in there and saying, like, oh, my, it's so expensive, so much more expensive. Yeah, they're, almost, the they're almost laughing at you. They're like, yeah, oh. we sure, we can do that, you oh, moron. I, yeah, I bought the ticket. I got a shit seat. Middle? What am I going to do? No, it's like, an, I, I hate the aisle, man, because I'm just big enough that, like, I feel like it's on purpose, man. I just get wailed by everybody and everything that goes down that. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I got hit by I, three suits. I am such, as a big guy, I'm so aware of my space. When I walk through an airplane aisle, I really do like almost sideways it to some degree. And if I have a book bag on, I kind of like will hold it in my hands like, in front of me. Just another, and I'm talking about people just like that space.
spin around. Like I got cracked in the face with book bags. I got hit in the knee with metal wheels off of suitcase. It was terrible. Every time I'm even, in a, every time even I'm a in guy a, today, I was in an aisle. Even even an Indian guy today was putting his dick all over my fucking arm while he's trying to put his stupid fucking bag over my head. And it was personal. I bet he meant it. Oh, it was so personal. It smelled so bad. How do you like that? Do you not like the, what I'm do doing to you, Rent? Do hey. you love it? Hey, Jay, look up at me. Hey, guy, look up at me. <laughs> yeah. Make those eyes. Make those eyes, you know I love You know it. why they put you in the aisle, don't you? Because oh. your shoulder is perfect for my balls yes. to rest on. Oh, I'm boning up as we speak. Every time someone bumps me in when I'm sitting in an aisle, I always feel like it's personal. I always I, feel, me like, too. I, I, I always I mean, feel I, like they did it, and as they did it, as they got like two aisles in front of me, they're like, fucking pussy. Like, I've what? had what? What did you just say? Fucking <laughs> Go to the bathroom. I've had, I've had more than one uh, back and forth with a stewardess who hit me with her fat stewardess ass. Hey, they on, on are a, a, working a, hard in the sky. You, you, yeah, you think their asses would reflect it more? I like a thick old airline um, attendant. Yeah, they walked in the and they just they asked you, and to the point where it's like more than one stewardess on a flight like this, I've actually said like. Oh, Right now, come on, <laughs> yeah. dude! I've done that. I've actually. Like, said, yeah, it's, like, it's like this is. It's like you're trying to hit me now. Every I, time I start to nod off, you come over here and ass shot me in the shoulder. <laughs> okay, what are you checking me? Are you trying to prove something after a fucking play? Yeah, that's the that's the move. Is the it's just it, it's the shoulder. It's the aggressive shoulder bump. And it's like a wake you up level of like contact. So I'm a window guy. So me too. Every time, you know what? And I'll tell you why I'm a window guy. I'm surprised you're a window guy for this reason, Dan. This is no insult at all. All right. But I can go on an 18-hour flight probably without taking a piss. So I'll go in that window, and I won't bother anybody almost ever. Are you saying that I have a small childlike bladder? I'm saying your little baby fist of a bladder <laughs> fills up quick, and you got to keep annoying some guy, some businessman who wears pinky rings when he holds his dick when he pisses. And he goes like this: he sh he shakes as he awes. Uh, 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 got to get to hey, got to get to Toledo for that rubber deal. <laughs> Can't function till I drain the main vein. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Iguana's got to cry. I don't know what that means. Uh, we should probably take a break. Um, um, oh, yeah, we can take a break if you want. I gotta finish this travel oh, yeah, story because I want to do travel bonkers. story and then the second hour we got a little more fell dog. Oh, buddy, we got fell dog coming out the wazuli. So we gotta get you know, and for those of you who don't like the, our fell dog talk or think we've done too much of it, that's why we're doing this right now. So later in the show, you can just turn it off and go to a time when we weren't talking about fell dog, which really isn't a time at all. It was it's 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 uh, BFD and AFD. Yeah. We're right now in the AFD uh, years. <laughs> before um, Feld Dog and after Feld Dog. Uh, well, you can take our first break, but before we do, Dan, why don't you tell some people about... Oh, well, you can discover great stories performed by talented actors and narrators with audiobooks from Audible, an Amazon company. Audible provides an unmatched selection of its bestseller, new releases, sci-fi, mysteries, classics, and more. Start with a free audiobook by going to audible.com slash serious. Use your smartphone or tablet along with the Audible app. You can escape with a story anywhere, on your commute, doing chores, in the car, or on the go. And that means you've got time to make the books you love a bigger part of your life. John Grisham, Stephen King, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, whatever your interest, you'll find it at Audible. So your next dinner prep could also be a spine-tingling thriller, your next workout, a breathless adventure. Hear it for yourself, start a 30-day trial, and your first audiobook is on us. Go to audible.com slash serious. Seamless. Perfect. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Forever, this time, this time will never end. Oh, oh, that's Peebo. Yeah, it is. Ms. Peebo Bryce. Bryce and the February in my arms again. This is a long distance love song day on the bonfire. That's all we're doing. Long I distance miss my love Danny. I miss my Jay. I miss my Danny so much. I just need my money. I need my name. Peebo. We had a once in a lifetime. Oh, man. I bet he smelled terrific. I bet he oh, I wore, know. like, incredible cologne. 
He had a rough go of it as a child, man. Peebo? Oh, he got the shit kicked out of him. And you know that angelic voice. He didn't want to bring it out until he was alone. He's mm-hmm. definitely one of those, like, you know when you see those movies and those black aunts are at a barbecue and they're like, sing, baby. You need to <laughs> sing. And he was probably like, I don't want to sing. Peebo, you too damn quiet. You need to sing. And then he was like, what's on? <laughs> if ever you're in my arms again. Oh, Peebo's self-conscious because he heavy. Hey, <laughs> my Peebo, come at your room, your auntie here. Sing for your auntie. Oh, this fat ass don't want to sing. <laughs> no, mama, I don't want to sing. Oh, this little motherfucker don't want to sing. Now she's, she's mean to him, putting cigarettes on his hair. <laughs> Joe Jackson eating him. I'd make him sleep in the fireplace, dumb motherfucker. Boy, I asked twice. Now I'm telling you, sing. Oh, so <laughs> Is he the black Michael McDonald? <laughs> it went for romances. <laughs> You sound like crank, a cart- you sound that, like a, you sound like a big cartoon dog when you do it. <laughs> right. If ever you're in my arms again, it's this time I'm not on your much better. <laughs> oh, oh man, that is bl- that is that is sweaty. Sexy black fuck music oh, right there. Oh, yeah, it is. That is silk sheets. I imagine that's like steam and silk sheets, and then one, ha- as I've always said before, one hand on the sheet and then the other one coming over it. Yeah. And just like, like a, it started off like in a linen shirt, just speckled with back sweat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it still looks good. It still looks as great. His chest is glistening. He's probably got a gold chain. Oh, my God. Maybe there's a lion's head on the gold chain. Yeah, and there's no pants on. No pants. Oh, no, no, no. Just like some kind of red bikini underwear that made sense for the time. <laughs> yeah, full butt bikini underwear. It made sense for the time. Black dress socks. Oh, Gucci socks. Mm-hmm. Just, and a little, just a little mid-top fade. And I'll tell you this right top. Now. Post-sex snacks probably out of this world. You think? Maybe pudding or something oh, see, sensual. I, I thought it was just leftover box of church's chicken. But I don't, you know what? I guess I don't know black people. <laughs> no, I don't think you do. I think they'd be delicious snacks. They would never go to church's chicken. Ever. That Ever. Place is good. Ever. Um, back to your hellacious travel experience. So. Uh, Jay being butt fucked across North America by Delta. Gotta eat these flights. Gotta eat it. So I buy my last minute ticket from JetBlue. I'm calling Christine, who. Literally, if you catch her, if from the first hour she falls asleep, but to the fifth or sixth, let's call it the ninth hour she is asleep, you almost have to hit her over the head with a cinder block to make to wake her up. Is she that deep? Christine, are you that deep of a sleeper? Yeah, it's crazy. It's in. I've missed flights. I've missed work. It's can been a we, my whole life. Can we see if you can sleep through a bonfire? You want a sleep tester? Yeah, I want to do sleep tests with Christine. I want to see if she can sleep through a bonfire. And you're going to hear snow. She's going to snore. Show. Oh, she's Christine, gonna, shut up. You're already snore. getting money from the show. She'll snore, and we and she'll be mortified when she hears Are what you, happens. Do you saw logs, Christine? Lo- logs? Yeah. No, she doesn't saw logs, but she said she's trying to cut down a house. <laughs> <laughs> Sneezing death noises. Mm. She's riding a fucking moped, dude. That's crazy. My old roommate. We gotta quit smoking, man. We gotta quit smoking. My old roommate. My roommate. My old roommate Vic, as you know, Mm -hmm. I could hear him through multiple walls snoring. It was impressive. That doesn't blow my mind. Yeah, he also took dumps like a grizzly bear, but I love him. Really? Oh, like a straight up grizzly bear. Smelled bad? No, nah, not really. Just uh, one time he didn't flush, and I was like, "That's an insane amount of shit." <laughs> I think, wow, holy shit! Yeah, you know, I, we may have talked about this, and if we did, my apologies here. But I always say that the funniest thing with like shit smelling, yeah, is that everyone's shit probably smells to some degree a little different. But the smell of smoking cigarettes and shitting is always the same. It's all yeah, we have we've always we've talked about yeah. it before. It is always the same. If you smoke a cigarette, you will make any shit smell smell a. a 
to a similar smell that you know. <laughs> like a shitterette? <laughs> yeah. If you are having trouble smelling someone's shit and you have cigarettes on you, light up immediately. And everyone you're, will be you're, I don't smell it at all. You go, oh, there it is. Oh, There's the catalyst. There it is. Oh, thank you. Once you added the cigarette, it's like dye. You're like, oh, got say, it. I see it. I see where it all goes. I was going to say, I go, I mean, the shit's just the fucking baking soda. The yeah. cigarette's the vinegar. That's what explodes. <laughs> that's what makes the volcano rumble. <laughs> that's, that's what makes the science fair volcano. That should be a great science fair experiment. Like, just have a pile of dump and you go, I don't smell anything. He goes, light up, bro. Yeah, they go, oh. Or it'd be even cooler. How has no one taken the volcano thing and done someone's butthole? If you have a child doing a science fair, please do a bonfire science project and do the volcano with the vinegar, but do it as someone's butt and it erupts into diarrhea. A paper mache ass. Yeah. And then, Absolutely. I mean, their child's going to get in trouble, but you're also good. You, technically, it'd be, it'd be like a good way to teach your child to say, fuck the system, but also like do the project. So you do the science project, but you're saying fuck the system because it's not a volcano. It's a man. And then you're like, and this represents Chinese food. And you if, put if, it you in trouble, <sighs> if you get in trouble, if you get in trouble for that in school, Jacob Batat, you have my word, will pay for your entire private schooling. Absolutely. And the, by the way, the private school of your choice will come right out. Of ahead. your choice. Yeah, of your choice. <laughs> He's got that Jacob money. He's got the Kip up money. He will pay for your testing to get into uh, New York City's elite public schools. Some uh, would Bronx say, Science. yeah, some would say um, they're more expensive than most public universities. But Jacob does not care. Have you ever dreamed of going to fame school? Well, just get kicked out of your school, and Jacob Batat will pay for your entire we'll school. We'll get you ushered into LaGuardia High School of the Performing Arts. Fame! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm live, gonna live forever. forever! Jacob's like, you are all <laughs> special. You all have <laughs> talents from across the city. Now and we are here to hone those talents. Here's the dress code. Always some sort of spandex and a shoulder-off sweatshirt. Get ready to work. And when I mean work, I mean work those legs and your artistic insides. Welcome Mark to Marco, if you're not wearing leg warmers, you're not dressed for school. Go out. It's like you didn't bring a pencil to your class. I'm offended. <laughs> Jacob's the fan. dance floor. The dance floor is your scantron sheet, and your goddamn leg warmers are your pencils. Just know that. Just know that that we don't take tests here. We just progress. Two, two, five, four, six. Two, five, ball, heel, kick. One, two, four, five. Two, kick, turn, flip, turn, flip, kick, turn, flip, kick. You idiots! I How many times do I have to say it? I will beat all of you. None of <laughs> all the girls in the class. You will not have your periods until you are seventeen. I will make sure of it. I will stunt your growth like an American gymnast. I picture Jacob in one of those sweatshirts, the off-the-shoulder yeah, sweatshirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I imagine him just being a vicious bitch to everybody. A tight, <laughs> oh, a tight rolled bandana. Yeah. All right, you know what? We have an announcement to make, and I would like to ask right now if during this, for what we're about to announce, if Jacob can show up wearing it. <laughs> Dressed like a dance. Well, teacher. I'm agreeing to do something, so he better agree. He'll do the entire segment dressed uh, up in fame. fame uh, like. <laughs> I mean, a tight rolled bandana. Yes. Uh, um, gray, gray, uh, gray warm ups under a one a onesie. Yes. So like gray, and then foot warmers, leg warmers, leg warmers, toe uh, shoes. Yeah, toe shoes. Jacob, are you listening? What you're, what you, what we want you to wear? And definitely okay. an off the shoulder. Sweatshirt. Yes. Like a wide butt of Fuko neck, but you're wearing it more flash dancing. Yes. Nailed it. And do, do you want to tell uh, people where they'll be able to see Jacob dressed like that? Um. Well, great news, everybody. For Drum the New York roll. Okay, my dick's out. Go, Jack. For, for the New York Comedy Festival, we are going to be doing a live broadcast of the bonfire in front of a live audience live at the Village Underground on Tuesday, November 1st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can get tickets at NewYorkComedyFestival.com. It's NYComedyFestival.com. Uh, our first uh, live show went so amazing that we're going to try a, a different endeavor here. We're, we're not only doing it in front of a live audience, we are also doing a live broadcast. So as you are there, what we're doing is going to be going out live. We have already some pretty fun stuff planned. Uh, Jacob's not going to be undressed this time. In fact, he's going to be dressed awesomely. Yeah, we're not going to kill the momentum of the show by bringing out a giant plastic pool. 
It's a waste of time. No need to do it. We uh, are going to have a great live broadcast, but we are planning a special performance Yeah. for Don't you. Don't even say it. I'm not. I'm saying we're planning a special performance where it's going to involve the entire all the members, crew. All the members of the bonfire. Fuck, it's going to be awesome. And it is <laughs> something that's got me... I hate... I, I feel like I just saw a great movie I want to tell you the ending to, yeah. and I want to tell the world this, but just come... And no, it's going to be absolutely fucking awesome. Yeah. We've been planning on it if for a couple hate, weeks now. If you hate the first hour and 45 minutes of the broadcast, you will love the last 15. Yeah. There's no one that will not love the last 15 minutes of the broadcast. It's, just, it's, it's impossible. Just, it's guaranteed. And... Uh, is this thing that makes you happy? Yeah. We want to sell it out at the Village Underground, uh, the New York Comedy Festival. The, Same venue we did last time for those of you yeah. who came. It was an amazing event. I was literally, before we got on stage, Soder will tell you that I, we, we were both, like, touched. Yeah. it was. And by the way, I will the say, response. the first 30 minutes of the show, we did 40 minutes before knowing what had happened because we were having so much fucking fun with the live audience. It was insane. We got way behind just having fun with talking to the crowd. I'll tell you what. Uh, another bonfire shout-out I want to give to a J&J Texas Barbecue in Toronto. Uh, out there, in I Kensington. saw you with Nate and Nick Thune and Christine there in Kensington Market because we were walking down the street. We we're just going to get some lunch somewhere, and a guy came out on the street and said, "Like you know, oh, you got to come in, man. We're huge fans. We listen to you all the time on the bonfire. Yeah, and we're huge fans. We, and you know, my my cook wants wants to meet you and everything. And my or his partner it was. And I was like, yeah, sure, we'll pop in for a second. We popped in for a second. I mean, they gave us. I mean, we ended up giving them a couple bucks because it felt bad. Because I mean, they gave us. Plates upon plates. That's I mean, not plates, like trays dude. upon trays of ribs and sausage and their cornbread. I mean, dude, everything. there's nothing. Yeah, there's. It, I mean, that's. I think the one cool, the great part about this show is is going out on the road and, and being able to do comedy on the road and like meeting people that listen to the show, which I don't think yeah. is possible for a lot of other people that have radio shows because they're not comics. They don't go out on the road like we do. But what I think is even cooler than that is when fans of ours meet each other, uh, like our buddy Tyler in Ohio, who Jay you met and I met when I did my week in Cleveland and hilarities. He works yes. at a shop and truckers use his bathroom and. And he has a bonfire thing up, and the uh, one of the truckers used the bathroom came out. And was like, "Hey, man, crackle, crackle!" And you're like, "That's fucking awesome. That's just yeah, awesome I, that they." Uh, and I got it. I got it all week when I was in Toronto. Of course, uh, it continues on Oddball Tour. Yeah, Oddball Fest, fans. Oddballfest dot com. Go uh, make sure you get tickets to the last uh, couple shows coming up on the Oddball Festival. Uh, Oddball right, this weekend. This weekend we're uh, this weekend Friday, Mountain View. Uh, Irvine on Saturday and Phoenix, Arizona. Dan's old stomping ground. A Z. Oh boy. Um, Those were different uh, times. On Sunday, and then we'll be back for a Oddball Live on Monday. Fuck yeah, we got to do. Yeah, oh yeah, we're doing a live on Monday, and then a new. And Danny Soder yes. will, bring, will bring his hilarious ass to the Rogue Island Comedy Festival in Newport, Rhode Island, next Thursday, October sixth. For tickets, go to rogueislandcomedyfestival dot com. Then Saturday, October 8th, you can catch him at the Laugh It Up Comedy Club in Poughkeepsie, New York. Go to dansoder.com for tickets to that. Fuck uh, all fun yeah. stuff, man. Staying busy. Yeah, dude, I got to, um, I, I, I got really, I'm filming Billions right now, and it's it's kind of out there, so I, I, this isn't blowing a surprise or any episodes. But is one that a of, show? One of the episodes is directed, yeah, it's a show. It's just a little thing that they got going, but um, one of the episodes. got picked up? It got picked up. I think they're going to give us a second season. We're halfway through, <laughs> so hopefully they give it to us. But uh, one of the episodes is directed by John Singleton, the Boys in the Hood. Oh, yeah, you told me that's such a cool thing. But I forgot. And then I showed up yesterday to film, and then this like uh, tiny black dude's like, "What's up, man?" And I was like, looked at him, I'm like, "Where do I know this guy?" And I'm like, you "Oh, yell, that's John Singleton." You should have yelled, "Domino's motherfucker!" Domino's motherfucker. He would have been like, "Excuse me, motherfucker." Like, he's like, uh, "You're no Ice Cube. You, sir, are no Ice Cube. I have directed. What if he had the old English accent? We didn't <laughs> yeah. realize it." I've been a director of multiple feature films, including Sir, Full Brother. I am a filmmaker. You are no Ice Cube. You should have been like, either they don't know, don't show, or I just don't, don't give, give a fuck, fuck what's yeah. going on in the hood. <laughs> What be going on in billions? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> That's oh. the most dramatic, like, believing of a character. Doughboy just walks off and, like, Pours the rest of his beard on the ground. Yeah. Yells at a crackhead and then just vanishes. <laughs> Should I do that on Wednesday when I film with him again?
<laughs> Either they don't know. Either they don't know. Don't show. What is the, uh, why do I, I'm such an idiot. I, I was on the show. Fucking what's, uh, idiot. what's, uh, the main character's name? Is it, uh, Ricky? Axe. Axe. Oh, yeah. Bobby Axelrod. Yeah. Uh, Axe, you said, just go, when you're seeing with him, you just change the lines, like, Bobby, they don't know. <laughs> don't show. I just don't give a fuck about what be going on in the hood. Uh, cut. What the fuck was that? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to make it. Uh, I was trying to make it. You know, a little, little wink, a little wink in the nudge, huh? Huh? <laughs> He's like, no, yeah. Can you please not do that? Hey, Dan, I just got short squeezed. They go, fucking sick of this shit. <laughs> I'm so sick of this shit. Yeah. Fucking sick of this shit. <laughs> fucking <laughs> sick. Come on, come on, come on. I'm so sick oh. of this shit. Oh, yeah. How do you know? Uh, <laughs> I, I think I I kind of want to do that now. That would, oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That would be. Wow. That's, by the way, another classic example of how I have overbuilt that scene in my head. I mean, I had him screaming, almost looking at the camera, breaking the fourth wall, Domino's motherfucker. Yeah, that's not He just goes, Domino motherfucker. It's so Domino cool. motherfucker. This is all time about that. It couldn't be more. He's going to be more laid back. Uh, Jay, I think you told the story wrong. He seemed, Doughboy seems to be in good spirits. <laughs> um, just for the sake of getting it out, when we finish this crazy travel thing at all, because it's just, it's pretty quick from here on out. I had to buy a flight back to New York uh, at the airport, get back to New York, fly to JFK. Christine finally wakes up and here, sees all my uh, texts I sent her where I told her she has to now not go on her flight, so I'm eating that too. Okay. Uh, and then book us, me and her, two flights from LaGuardia Greater. to Toronto. So I land uh, in JFK, have to get right on a cab, go to LaGuardia, <sighs> and then fly from LaGuardia to Toronto. It was a, a multiple thousands dollar mistake. Oh God! Not bring up, not bring up, not bring up my, uh, not bring up my passport. I love that I have a card that you can get me uh, to Canada or Mexico by land or sea. Sea travel. <laughs> I'm gonna sea travel to Canada. You're taking the first one up to Newfoundland. <laughs> Raise the bridge, eh? I gotta get over there. You're swimming. Th oh, you swim to Toronto from Detroit. <laughs> I just get out holding this card. <laughs> Ah, it's okay. I'm cramping up, but here's my card. Ah. I'm all suited up like Ryan Lochte. Yeah, you're like, ah, that river water is, dude. That lake water is gross. <laughs> Stay out of that river. I don't know if that's the Detroit side or you guys, but yeesh. Anyways, here's my card. I am gassed. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, um, I so always yeah, freak out. Whole, I freak out about that. Ordeal. I'm surprised you didn't bring your passport. I always freak the fuck out about that kind of stuff. I, I Listen, I wouldn't have forgot it if I was going to Toronto for my thing, but I was going to, I was flying to Houston first, you know, it was like first thing in the morning. It yeah. was, you know, I just didn't, I, I look and listen, it's my fault. You know, it's funny, Christine's so used to getting like, uh, just eating the brunt of my fury and anger at oh, things cool. that are like that <laughs> yeah. going on. She's been trained yeah. well. Yeah, just take a punch like a some bitch. Um, no, but she's like, you know, no, just know that she has to kind of like, she's next to me, so she has to deal with my bad mood. Yeah, you know what I mean. And she, and she tries, would like, you consider her a uh, Jay Whisperer? Is she the big Jay Whisperer? No, 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 no. Or no, is no. she Quite more the like, opposite? Is she more like the uh, the trainer in that classic internet video of when the guys in the karate gi and the bears next to the woman and the bear attacks the woman and the guy in the karate gi starts chopping the bear? Do you remember that yeah. clip? I love that clip <laughs> so is that, much. Is that is that Christine? Is she in the karate gi and she starts chopping you when you go nuts? No, she's not. Ch it's just like, yeah, or is like she a the woman in the place for all of his hate to go? Oh, cool! What? Oh, so that's fun. He can fun. then concentrate all his hate on me instead of what's going on. Oh, p pain displacement. I get yeah. it. Yeah, anger displacement. <laughs> no, but she. I mean, look, Christine will admittedly tell you too. It's like somehow she doesn't have a way of making it. Like, listen, she's some very good, world class at making it better situationally yeah does that make sense yeah I mean, by the way I mean, though I mean, as I mean, you're telling me this i'm watching the bear attack the woman and it's kind it's of making great. me laugh <laughs> it's uh she's great at fixing it situationally where it's like one thing i was pretty certain of while i was irate at the fact that remembering that oh yeah you can't wake christine up with 73 phone calls in a row yeah i do know when she wakes up when I land, we'll 
probably have our flights figured out to where I have to do next. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's great for that, but she's, uh, no, but besides that, it's like, it'll be like something like, it's like I'd get there and she would forget for the fact that I'm like frustrated. She didn't do this. I'm just saying generally these kind of situations go where I'm super frustrated and then she gives me more bad news at some point that wasn't necessary to give me right then and there. It's just funny, I mean? I, yeah, because as you're telling me this, there's just replaying the woman being attacked by the bear. So it just all of a sudden, yes. she's became the woman, and you're the bear. Where's I'm she, the bear. I'm just <laughs> at her. But once bothered, um, he doesn't stop. Once but, Jay but, but, realizes his flight is canceled, but he Rob turns on Christine. <laughs> but Rob Mayu actually just is a funny thing. You know, a third party like that who's not <laughs> yeah. involved, like with us, like. You can always point it out, and it just makes you break down and laugh. Because, by the way, Christina is right, To her, in fairness to her. If she would have said this sentence, I would have not talked to her for three hours <laughs> um, and maybe cursed her out. But what Rob Mayu does, like, after all that, we get to the uh, hotel. Rob Mayu's already there. He gives us a hug. We say hi to Rob. You know, he's our good friend. You know Rob. And he goes, uh, I was like, man, what a fucking crazy, awful awful day of just travel and bullshit and losing money and stuff and rob goes yeah well at least it's 100 percent your fault <laughs> yeah. and i was like and i first i did i made that first like frown like getting ready to yell face and then just started laughing i'm like it's 100 percent my fault i should have just brought my passport <laughs> this all would not have happened if i would have brought my passport yeah well now you got it now you've learned now i got it now, yeah, and now I'm in Los Angeles after my triumphant hang in Toronto. Uh, Toronto Just for Laugh was great this year. That's, that's a really good festival, man. They do it right. Mm. Yeah, I haven't yeah. Um, I haven't done Toronto's Just for Laugh. So, Chicago, I've never done Toronto. I've never even been to Toronto. Is that weird? That is very, very weird. It's um, so close to New York we're gonna City. F- we're going to fix that with the one Rob May who will set you up on some awesome shows out there. I've done runs with him before, and it is worth the hang. Yeah, I've they got never... That- they got that room. My friend Joey, uh, this this she's the uh, Rebecca Trent. If anyone knows the, the okay. Creek in the Cave, the Creek in the Cave, very accommodating the comics like person up there, and she owns a store. Not even a store. It's like a head shop on one side, uh, and one door, and then the other door is just kind of like a snacks depot where oh. she sells like soda and chips and brownies, and she's constantly baking stuff. What is this? And the, this sounds this is real. Dreamy. And in the back, in the back. Is a comedy room mm. where you can, where everyone, uh, yourself included, can smoke weed while you do the show. I mean, I think that is like great for the first time I smoke weed. But if I keep smoking weed on stage, the show I feel will progressively get no, worse. You don't have to worry about. You don't, I'm not saying smoking weed on stage. I'm saying you're performing for a crowd that's doing exactly what they want to do. Does yes. That make sense? So you'd think that you're going to perform for a bunch of burnouts who are not going to get nuance and, and just kind of like, you know, huh, 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 like laughter. <laughs> Wait, what's but your stoner laugh? Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They actually, uh, they do get nuance and they have a really, uh, it's fun. It, it, it really is. That's a fun room. It's called the Underground Comedy yeah. Club in, uh, in Toronto. Or I'd, like to, Destiny. I'd like to go up there. But yeah, well, we, we should maybe, maybe what we'll do actually in Toronto, buddy, is we could probably rock it out, do like a bonfire, like. Just like me and you go up there and do a thing. It'll pack. It's only like, you know, it's only like 120 seats tops. You see, see what kind of Canadian draw we are. Go up and do. Oh, buddy, I'm telling you, I was just there. It's a big draw. They, they get and and they love the bonfire up there. We should do. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to. We say. should do a show where it's like Rob May you up top. I do 20. You do 30. Then we do 20 together. Yeah. I'm telling you, that'd be great. And we could also even do it at a weekday thing because they have uh, Series XM Studios oh, up there. Oh, that's right in your fucking face. How about We're bringing Lou. We're bringing Jacob. Oh, We're bringing Christy. We're bringing Merkface. The bonfire takes Toronto. Oh, that'd be so great. Yeah, Merkface. I mean, if he can get in. Then it'll definitely be great. Strap on your dicks, eh? The bonfire's yeah. coming. Yeah, Canada. We're not your buddy um, guy. Toronto's a great city, too. They have a lot of just great venues. If it's not that one I mentioned, I mean, just like the Rivoli. I did the Garrison this year. Comedy Bar itself. There's a lot of really cool... Uh, it's a great comedy town, and those shows were all packed out, man. Uh, all three What Your Fucking Deals were amazing. You'll love this story. Um, Sinbad mm-hmm. did 
did my first night show. So I told you that whole what? horror story. I told you that my whole horror story of travel. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. We get in. Here's what makes the day start going good. I'm like, you know what? So I have a 9 o'clock headline show, 11 o'clock, what's your fucking deal? The show's only slate for 60 minutes. Okay. And I'm like, you know, it's probably going to go a little longer, what's your fucking deal? But no, but I can be in bed by 1 at latest, you know? Yeah. 1, 2 a.m. If, if I'm having a blast. And do you get to sleep in the next day? And I get to sleep in the next day. Okay, that is no, so yeah, no great. big deal. So you're like, it's fine. And I got there, went and watched the second half of the Eagles game, got there in time for that. Okay. Great. A lot of fun. Beat the shit out uh, of the Steelers. Yeah, had some food. Go to the headline show. Headline shows. Uh, headline show. I thought on my end it was a little soft because I was just I was zonked, man. I was. Just, I haven't slept at that point probably in close to thirty hours. Can't change the game every night, but you can try. That's it. So I. Uh, but it was a good show. People enjoyed it. And then we did what's your fucking deal, which I was excited about. Sinbad's closing it. Uh, everyone slated for 10 minutes. I'm like, Sinbad's probably going to do like 20 minutes. I'm almost letting everybody know, like, buckle up for, you know, he's a legend. Yeah. It's Sinbad. The guy's going to do, you know, he's, he's going to do some time. He's probably going to do 20 minutes. Let's say 30 minutes. I'm not going to freak out. At the end of a show that already went like 40, 50 minutes. Yeah. He did an hour and 40 minutes on stage. <laughs> not really doing crowd work. Joe DeRosa is the audience, Mike, on this one. And DeRosa was killing, by the way, doing so great. And he's Shampoo! In it. He's, Shampoo! Yeah, Shampoo! 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 Uh, Joe, Look what's the story guy. with that guy right there? Shampoo! Shampoo! Shampoo. Shampoo. Um, by the way, uh, me and DeRosa standing outside of that show at one point, guys walked by screaming shampoo, <laughs> which was great. I fucking love it. And DeRosa loves it, too, actually, which is awesome. Yeah, but no, DeRosa's, 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 been, DeRosa's been awesome about it. Oh, yeah. DeRosa's so good at audience, Mike. Yeah. Um, he really is. He goes around. He works the crowd he's good. A funny and a lot motherfucker. Of fun. So funny. And uh, and Sinbad's on stage, and he's going back and forth. But Sinbad's not really doing... He's just sort of doing, like, material, sort of. And he's getting... And I don't know if it's material, but he's just kind of going off the cuff, maybe we'll say. But it seems a little more prepared than that. Yeah. And he's doing things about, like, you know, why he'd want to be a vampire or a werewolf or a yeah. vampire... And then DeRose is just trying to incorporate the crowd to keep it the theme of the show. And he's like, going to all these members, he goes, well, what, hey, what kind of uh, what, what kind of monster would you want to be? <laughs> like he's going, and then, uh, it's not really engaging very much. And an hour and ten minutes of Sinbad on stage, all of a sudden I just stop hearing Joe on the microphone for a while. Yeah. And then the green room door just opens. It's Joe without the microphone just going like, what are we doing out there, man? I've been on my feet for two hours. I don't know what's what going the, on. Up is down, what, left is what, right. What, I mean, shampoo. 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 I shampoo. I hey, shampoo. I hey, shampoo. But was he, I mean, here's the thing about Sinbad. Was, was he killing? No. Okay. He did a... Uh, I, I was so expecting you to say listen, yes. Listen, it's, I, it, leaned it, into it was, the, I leaned into that so hard being like, but tell me this. Was he killing? But this is coming from a uh, like, no. this is coming from a fan of Sinbad. Well, you're, okay, big fan of Sinbad. Okay. What I'm saying is he's it was late. It was a Sunday night. That's a big thing. You know what I mean? It's it's Sunday night. It's people are now at a show that's been running for t over two and a half hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they the people that were stayed were in, but people were leaving and just kind of getting over it. What I was blown away, but I mean, I listen, I thank Sinbad emphatically for doing the show. I mean, like, again, it was such a kick for me to hang out with him, even. Yeah. Uh, great guy, hilarious guy. Um, I just, that was just like an ill call, like a bad call to like go out there and like, why do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But he can do it. He's Sinbad. He does, you know, he can, he can make his own way on that one. But um, what I thought was interesting was hanging out in the green room with him a lot in between shows. Sinbad curses up a storm that is great i didn't know that i thought he was like across the board i mean every story is like this motherfucker woke up to me and i'm like motherfucker fuck you oh god so how does he not do a raw album and he's doing the whole like you know uh i i don't want to over i think he's throwing the n words around i i, I might be wrong about uh, they that. need to do a raw sinbad needs to do a raw ass angry album he should. He oh, should do a Ross I mean, with, with his ability to kill and the, how funny he is, him going, like, just do a one-off and then go back to being Sinbad. But it went so long that I think it started to become, his set started to become a slightly homophobic, they said at one point. Okay. All right, all right. Well, you <laughs> know. It started getting a little weird. <laughs> That's yeah, he started, he, started, he started, like, 
borderline defending Bill Cosby. All right. Listen, man, you know, uh, for a guy that's constantly in windbreakers, that can also be a sign of mental instability. You know? I mean, it's a, uh, yeah. And by the way, let me tell you what he doesn't want to talk about in the green room with me. House uh, being, being Walter uh, on Different World okay. and the locker room scene of Necessary Roughness. Oh. Because I tried to start a conversation about both of those things. And he shut you down, huh? Just like went into something else, you know what I mean? It was like he would tell, I would be like, man, I got to tell you what I said. I was showing my girlfriend not too long ago, Necessary Roughness. That locker room scene, dude, is one of the best. He goes, you know, uh, Jason Bateman likes to go to strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> he starts going like in a whole different thing. He starts, how the fuck goes to strip clubs? You know, uh, Ted Danson killed a woman in 1993. Was uh, he, was, he, he just was, starts changing things. He just starts throwing other people under the bus. It's crazy. Uh, Ted Danson, I, I mean, you know, I ain't going to say this, but I think he hits his wife. Uh, I'm uh, in the room with him. I'm uncomfortable with the guy. Uh, you know, my, anyway. sister su my sister sucked off John Ratzenberger. Well, yeah, excuse me? Why, why would you say that? Uh, anyways, I'm just letting you know, my sister was an old school hoe. All right, so anyways, I'm like, I, I don't mean to be weird, Sinbad, but I, every night I used to go to bed to house guest, and that's just weird that, and you know what's crazy, man, um, Scott Bakula actually <laughs> did heroin for six months. Uh, it was when we were filming. I didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> Oh, okay. uh, I'm just going to say this. Arnold Schwarzenegger likes trannies. I mean, anywho, fucks them hard. Anyways, uh, I get all of my windbreakers made by the same guy. That's fun. Uh, Sinbad house guest really was. At one point, I probably watched it three times a week. It made me laugh so hard. Oh, uh, Phil Hartman killed a hooker in 1985. Little known fact. Before now, if, that was a brother, if that was a brother, if that was a brother. I, you know what? I heard when he was at SNL, he refused to work with Jews. I just heard that, though. That's what I heard about Phil Hartman. It was crazy. It was crazy. Unfrozen caveman racist. Yeah, that's a racist ass motherfucker. <laughs> like, I, okay. Uh, let's, here's the deal. We got to take a break. We should take a break and then come back. I can back. feel Jacob across 4,000 oh, miles just cracking those fists together. He's just staring at me like shit. But you know what? He's got his I'm not upset. He's, I'm not upset about it because in my mind, he's doing it while wearing an off-the-shoulder sweatshirt. Not me. I'm in the same room as him. He's got his gator stare going. Take a look at me and tell me what you see. We got to do three reads. Live reads? On this break? No, in the next hour. Should we do one right now, Jacob? Do you want me to do one right now? Do you want me to go in front of you? Do you want to see my cool live read skills? Hit it! <laughs> now that it's fall, life is more hectic than ever. That's why I care about getting my best quality sleep. And it's why I love my sleep number bed. To be your best during the day, you can't afford a mediocre night's sleep. You can't mm -hmm. afford a sleep number bed. Sure. My sleep number bed setting is up to 60. Jay, you still at 75? I forget mine. I've been gone for so long. My sleep number setting is a curvy, awful... Delta seat. Well, you know what mine? The sleep number bed lets me choose my <laughs> ideal firmness and change it. Each side adjusts, making it the perfect bed for couples. While you and Christine are on the road, I'm flip-flopping between a 55 and a 35. <laughs> Up and down. Yeah. With optional sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep so you know what to adjust for for your best quality sleep. Like your sleep number setting. In fact, according to Sleep IQ research, people who adjust their sleep number setting are 58% more likely to have improved sleep quality. My sleep IQ score last night was 938. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's an amazing score. It's pretty awesome. A queen sleep number mattress with sleep IQ technology starts at only $1,099.98. I, I topped that at 251. Oh, that's weird. You should get your sleep game up. It's a great value. No better sleep. Sleep number stores are nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com and be sure to tell them that Jay and Dan say you. I'm not trying to knock it out of the park. I'm just trying to get on base. I'm Ricky Henderson. <laughs> and now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Smooth sounds. It's the smooth sounds of player. Baby, come back. It's Dunkin' Donuts Radio. No, it's, uh, it's Sirius XM 95. <laughs> Comedy it's Central. Claw. It's Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soto. That's Big J Okerson. And this is the bonfire. <laughs> I am Boston creaming my pants over this. <laughs> uh, I got to check my underwear. I think I got a little bit of raspberry donut on the back. I think I'm <laughs> dying of something. Oh, I'm 
jelly donuting. That might be a hemorrhoid burst. Either way, I for the next half hour, a baker's dozen donuts on sale for three ninety nine. For the next forty five, let's celebrate internal bleeding by giving half off jelly filled donuts. Uh, in the studio, a friend, comic, and premiering his half hour special on Comedy Central this Friday at 12.30 a.m. Yes, it's technically Saturday. Nick Turner, everybody. Hello. I love yeah. you. Yeah. I love all of you. Hey, Dan, don't forget that his debut album, Yelling, was also going to be available Friday as well on Comedy Central Records. Oh, shit. Double dose of Nikki T on Friday. I can't believe that accidentally came up. It just did. DP. DP Nikki T. Oh, two, one in the pink, one in the stain. Yeah, I don't have an extra one. Okay. For the two pinks. Oh, you don't have a guana dick? That's cost me a lot of relationships. Yeah. I wish you had double dick. Regular old human dick. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you have a dick like oh. a lizard? No, I would I would have said we would have done this as a phone or if I knew you were going to come in here with just a regular old human dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jay, you're luckier in L.A. I'm just here with his one, with one dick having Nick Turner. Guys, I really I'm thought sorry. most people were, well, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not involved in radio. The you radio know? guy, yeah. Once you get into radio, you grow another a dick. A dick for radio. A dick it's for a radio. whole new world. <laughs> a whole new. Um, I was trying to catch up Nick off the phone about uh, the Corey Feldman situation, uh, yeah. our involvement with it. Shit's getting cray. In fact, I said before the show started uh, out here in LA, uh, the studio next to me, I got to meet officially Rude Jude. That's pretty awesome. Officially. Yeah, well, we've and, had uh, him on the show. We haven't met him. Oh, uh, okay. We, we talked to him. Uh, yeah, he, he called in from uh, LA and he, uh, great dude. I might, I might pop on his show tomorrow if possible, but uh, I was telling him, I was Letting him know he was not in the uh, in the mix of all the Corey Feldman news going. And see now he now Corey Feldman made news by going on Rude Jude's show. <laughs> he wouldn't talk about the music. Uh, and Rude Jude he got mad because he wasn't talking about the music. So that's where I told you, Nick, that our doctorate comes in is we are up to date more on what the what's going on with Corey Feldman. <laughs> Rude Jude was more like, "What's going on with these boys that are getting finger blasted in Hollywood?" Yeah. He's like, "Well, I'm here to really talk about the music." You gotta understand the arrangement I made with the keyboards and the drums. Uh... What's Corey Hames' butthole taste like? <laughs> I. Uh... Uh, Got to be honest, I really only know Corey Hames' musical career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did he well, do so one? I'm, uh, did he have one at all? Well, there's mostly... no possible way he didn't. He did so many drugs. It's po- yeah, there's no possible way he didn't try to mix some music. Many years. Do you You've think, made an album. Do you think there's like a like a hip hop? Do you think he's got like a spoken word? <laughs> <laughs> if they do, Dan, can we pool our money together and buy it, and we can be the executive producers and release the basement tapes of Corey Hames? <laughs> oh, dude, Corey Hames, you give me. There is music. Uh, oh yeah. Basement oh, sessions. Oh, is there? God. It's called Corey Haim. You give me on YouTube. Oh my Christ! It's reggae. Yeah, rap and stuff. I be, I be hanging out with the Haim star. I stopped sniffing and started booting, man. Everyone know I'm doing to introduce them to the needle drugs. <laughs> we was making a reggae album. I said, Corey, if you want to get airy, you gotta shoot it into the veins. <laughs> Man, is this a video? Is there a video for pretty, this? this? I bet you Corey, I, there's, I bet you Corey Feldman called and asked to be a part of this project and hey, was turned Corey, down. Corey, it's me, Corey. You're too controlling, Feld. <laughs> I need to make my own artistical experiment. <laughs> well, well I, I, we're going reggae. We'll get into it more uh, when I come back, and we're both in the studio together. Could we watch the video? But he's apparently went on, or it's going to air soon. Doctor Oz. Oh uh, well, so he ma- oh, hold on real quick. Now where he made well, he made some. I just want to say he made some uh, declarative statements. Whereas he is going to stop talking about Corey Haim, which he says is him getting railroaded because people ask him about Corey Haim. He tells them they edit it. Sounds like he's just talking about Corey Haim. And apparently, Corey Haim's mother is like, could you please shut up about my son? Wow. <laughs> like, he, she wants him to stop bringing... Uh, she, most people would be like, I want my son's name to live on, but it's like, it's just, because it's associated with Corey Feldman, she's like, can you please shut up and stop hey, saying my son's it's name? It's Mrs. H. Uh, saw you on the Today Show. <laughs> can you stop bringing up Corey? Could you? You're, you're shitting on his memory entirely. We, well, we're going to get to this Corey Feldman voicemail. So we'll get to Corey Haim's music career when you get back, Jay. Absolutely. And the Dr. Oz thing. But well, we should get to we it now. We have set up for the rest of the year. Yeah, we're good. We're good to 2017. By the way, I, I want to say, I will. I did have fear that we're uh, beating a dead horse here. But 
I've not gotten one negative response of other people going like, please keep going with Corey Feldman until this well is dry. Yeah. Well, some people are... I've had one guy be like, that's enough for Feldapalooza. He called it something like that. And I was like, well, we got to get to it because there's another important... But before we get to the to the voicemail, uh, we got a caller and it came in and I was like, I feel like Jay needs to hear this caller before we get into the Feld dog stuff. Does he work for Delta or Chevy? He works for both. And he says mm-hmm. that he enjoys bringing you misery and that he's devoted his life to it. <laughs> he's greasing up his knuckles right now. He said that uh, he personally follows you around the corn- country, causing calamity, as he <laughs> said. Uh, no, but David in California said he has a story about him and his friend's aunt. David, you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to continuation out school, uh, continuation of high school out here in Riverside. Is that, oh, Riverside. My sister used to live in Riverside. California? Yeah, yeah right by Mission yeah. Viejo. The Mission Viejo Hotel, is that what it's called? I have no idea. I, I don't know. I was, that. was let's, roll the, let's roll the sluts hung out. Come on. Hey. Uh, you. Yeah, it's bad out here. Uh, but, um, no, so, Big J. Big fan, man. Uh, my daughter's name is Isabella as well. Nice. Yeah, he named her after you, Isabella. <laughs> mine's gonna be mine's gonna be fourteen in a week, man. That's crazy, crazy, yeah, it's crazy man. It's like she was just a baby. Yeah. But anyways, let's move on with the story. I know you guys got a big show and uh, you know big stuff to do. But um, it was Halloween. Hey, Nick Turner's here. Yeah. So oh, yeah, what's up, Nick? <laughs> yeah, what's good? How are you? Nothing much, man. Uh, just chilling, man. I thought I'd share this story. I uh, pretty much listen to the bonfire every every episode, so. Uh, Pretty much up to game on everything. <clears throat> so you were saying, sorry, Love I just it. choked on my own spit. <laughs> <laughs> Nick just almost watched me die. What the fuck was that? Nick I almost did nothing watched me to die. Help. I think Nick just almost tried to choke me with his mind powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but David, you said you were at a Halloween party after you were, you went to Continuation High School, which sounds awesome. It sounds like if you didn't get enough fun I, in high school, you're I just ask like, what that is. What is it? Yeah, that's something you get kicked out of regular high school. They teach you how to work on cars and heating and cooling and shit. Oh, oh, so it's more like instead of high school. No, I got kicked out of high school, dude. I was a junior with freshman credits. So I had like 30 credits. It's oh. today, junior! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you're just trying, so basically it was like to help graduate or for you to graduate, you had to go to continuation. You went to extra periods. No, so, I did graduate. It was actually a, a full eight-hour school, and um, it was just for like, kids that got into trouble because I got kicked out of school and like dude I, was just say, I thought I thought Jake <laughs> just said you got kicked out of school and he goes no, I wasn't kicked out of school and you're like, well, I did. yeah all right yeah. But, all right <laughs> so you're at anyway, continuation high sidetracked, school sidetracked man um I was good. my friend invited me to you know his house because they're having a little Halloween party and he's like and he called me up and he's like dude I got this chick over here she wants to fuck and everything and I'm like cool you know so I'll head over there we're drinking some tecates, some tequila, <laughs> and um, dude, next thing I know, dude, short, we, we were all, like, I was like a wannabe cholo back in the day, like, nice. so we were all like cholos, and she was like the did, the, the fat chola with the eyeliner. Yeah, did she have uh, uh, outline? Eyeliner as lipstick liner? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, uh, the outside yeah. lipstick. So how many of you guys I got to suck off to be in the gang? Y'all, this, did she call you stupid a lot? You stupid. Rock a bar, baby. No, we were like we were like in front of the garage, like listening to oldies and drinking our tecates. And yeah, dude, I don't drink Cuervo, so I had like three shots, and like she starts looking like Jennifer Lopez. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> buddy. Look how much so, weight I lose. The more you drink that cerveza. Mira, mira, look, I'm beautiful now. <laughs> mira, look, mira, magic. <laughs> Is there some kind of an app or some way we can get a picture of me and Soda as cholas? Oh. Not cholos. Cholas. cholas. Yeah, K okay, Vazi's on it. He'll get it. He'll get it done. Uh-huh. I believe in him. So you're but drinking. Anyways, at one point, dude, at one point, her dad walks in, in the kitchen and it's like pure black in there. Dude, and we're like make it out like crazy. The dad just walks by and he's like, oh my God. You just hear him do that. He just like walks out the front. And I'm like, oh shit. 
Uh, that poor guy, he's seen that so many times. Yeah, you that's how you knew you were in trouble because the dad was even cholo. he wasn't even phased. He's <laughs> like, ay, 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 not again. He's like, please don't hit the garbage disposal when you're fucking this one. It wakes me I up. W- I work twenty three hours a day. The dry and you just sit here and drink all my cervezas. She's like, Shut up, Dad! Me. Shut up! Just throws a pan at him. I with the love of my life. <laughs> I try so hard to pull you through continuation school. Shut up, Dad! I found the man of my dreams! Turn the lights You're, off! When we lost your mother to gang warfare in 1987, I said I knew I had a hard road ahead of me. I, I, so did, he just walked out. David, he just walked out when you two were making out? <laughs> he walked out. We went outside. I kept drinking more. And, I, dude, I was like, I had this girl, like, in front of me. Like, I'm hugging her. Like, she's my, my girl for oh, life. Oh, dude, you know yeah. How, like, yeah, that's a drunk. Shit. You know what it is? You got so drunk, you started getting sentimental <laughs> with a girl that you are just trying to fuck. Dude. We're having a real connection. Dude, I did that. I've done that. David, I've done that so many times. I was hammered one time at a concert, and I was holding a girl like we were in love for 15 years. And she clearly, we were just going to bang. That was it. <laughs> I was at a Dave oh, yeah. Matthews band concert and I had my hands around her waist and then my buddy was there and he's like looking at me like what the fuck are you doing and I'm all crash into me satellite I was out as soon as this started uh, when he said his friend called him and was like hey there's a girl over here for you to bang why, do, why? That, that doesn't that's not my life I've I answered that call. Imagine I mean, I've, take, that I've, take, call. I've taken that call before. <laughs> yeah, just once, and it was a bad story. Also with a fat chola. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the same one. Yeah, that's a precursor. That's the tremor to a fat chola. Did, was her this dad was, there watching? No, this one was South Jersey. But when I did go, I felt bad that I just banged her behind someone's couch. Oh, so I, I said you I was going to take sneaky, her. You did a sneaky fuck. <laughs> yeah, so I said uh, I was like, oh, you know, I should hang out with this girl once, and then really saw her in the daylight, and she was was wretched looking and i felt bad so i went to go pick her up i took her to a phillies game yeah um her dad was doing the old like cleaning the gun when i got there to you know be like this is my baby i just want you to remember that and i was like yeah keep her dude like i'm just (laughs) taking i just feel bad for already fucking slugging it in her a couple times this is my own i'm paying my dues yeah i'm paying i'm paying back because i feel like i feel bad that i just anonymously fucked her one night and then uh we went to the game didn't talk really at all and then she came with me while I played basketball with my friends, and then we almost got into a fight with these guys at the basketball court, and they got out, they left, and jumped in their car, and they were just, like, yelling shit from their car, and they go, yeah, and that fat-ass, ugly bitch you're hanging out with, and everyone kind of looked at me like, you going to defend this chick? And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to get into a fight over this girl. Oh, heavens. I took her to a Phillies game. I did my penance. She has a small, she has a small Phillies uh, cup. A hat yeah. that looks like that ice yeah. cream came in. Yeah, she has her bat from Tiny Bat Day at the Phillies game. We're good. We're as good as we're ever going to be. She's gone. <laughs> she has a John Crook Slurpee cup. Yeah. <laughs> so, David, what happened with this chick once her dad walked out? All right, long story short, um, it was actually her, um, it was my friend Marcos that invited me. It was his dad. It was his dad. Okay, so Marcos' yeah. dad is the one that came yeah. in and saw that. Yeah, but long story short, dude, I ended up banging her in the garage, just me and her, and like. Did you do it on, on a car? The garage on a couch with the, couch. With the dude, candlestick. I know Jay's gonna love this. There was actually a big piece of carpet that was rolled up. Ended up banging her on that too. Wow. Nice. I can't appreciate that. It's like an indoor log. Yeah, I want to put yeah. you on this carpet log and fuck you. <laughs> hey, you want to get fucked on the carpet log? This is going to be crazy. I'm so hard right now. I want to take you on that carpet log. <laughs> oh, my cock is so grande right now. I want to fuck you on that log. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man, come over. I got a girl who's going to bang you. Don't worry. It's in a garage. Don't worry. We'll roll up some carpet yeah. so you can bang on You ever it. fucked on, on the bottom of carpet? Yes, her bo- her dad's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like that. It's, uh, it's like the under of a uh, bath carpet. Yeah. So it's all <laughs> like, ru- that it's rubber, like rubber. Yeah. It's got a bunch of marks on your ass cheeks afterwards. Like you're. <laughs> so wait. Aye, 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 aye. David, was it good? 
It was actually very good. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's the biggest twist. That's... We made love on the carpet log till the break of diggy dawn. The carpet started on fire because it was so passionate. <laughs> she says, oh, I, 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 I go to come. I said, no, not okay. yet. Um, so... What happened with her after that? You just fuck on a roll of carpet, and then that's the... Yeah, um, fucked her on the carpet. The crazy thing about the story was, I go to school the next day, and I'm like, Marcos, I'm like, thank you, dog. I was like, she was a little bit older than me. I was like, but that was fucking bomb. I was like, I was like, that bitch was sucking my dick. And, you know, I was doing the oh. whole thing. I was like 18. I was like, yeah. giving me head, and we're just fucking... And this is continuation high school, stuff. so you can get very vulgar. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you everyone's yeah, smoking yeah. cigarettes while you're building up while you're building grease lightning. <laughs> <laughs> you're putting a helicopter engine together, telling <laughs> fuck stories. <laughs> this continuation school is just a shitty thing. <laughs> you learn how to fix air conditioners. <laughs> Anyways, hey, pass me the Freon real quick. This chick's pussy got so cute. <laughs> hey, man, these cabinets are perfectly symmetrical. Anywho, I got my hand elbow deep in this whore, eh? Or is this a buzzsaw going as you tell the story? <laughs> I'm fucking her doggy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, David, you're at continuation school being pretty vulgar to Marcos about how it went down. How I fucked her. He kind of put yeah. his head down and, like, he kind of, like, he's like, all right. Like, he wasn't really too enthusiastic. He yeah. walked away. My friend, my, friend Rudy goes, my friend Rudy goes, hey, David, Marcos was too embarrassed to tell you, but that was his aunt that you fucked. Dude. Oh, oh shit. Then why the fuck did he call me in the first place? Yeah, that's his. You're right. You're absolutely right, David. You can't feel guilt. He put his aunt in front of. It wasn't like she was giving you fuck eyes. Lightning. It was. I, th I thought maybe you could fuck her. I didn't know you were going to do it on my road the bedroom carpet. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, dude. That's fucking. I mean, how did that affect your guys? I mean, are you, were you guys friends after that? We were good after that. I mean, oh wow, he the, is cool. It was at the moment, yeah. You were better than good. You guys were. You were. You were better than good. You guys were cousins. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're Eskimo cousins now. I don't know what that means, but I guess it kind of makes sense. We got the same tattoo, homes. <laughs> hey, if we rub tattoos, now we're now we're family. Because I fucked hey. your aunt. Hey, Tia David. <laughs> hey, Tia David. Oh, dude, that is fucking great. I just love the fact of you at continuation school just telling a randy story. While you're smoking, while you're smoking hand rolled cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> Pouch tobacco. You're like, oh, ah. shit. Oh, dude, well, David, thanks so much for calling in, man. Crackle, crackle. You guys have a good day, man. You crackle, too, crackle, man. dude. What a fucking great story. Let's take our last break, and when we come back, we'll listen. finally listen to this voicemail. We have to. But oh. before the break... Oh. Dan? <laughs> listen to a great story on Audible, but on Aud from Audio... Ah, I screwed up the last one! I was, I was lights out until then. Listen to a great story with Audiobook from Audible, an Amazon company. Choose from an unmatched selection of bestsellers, new releases, fantasies, romances, mysteries, and classics. Try Audible with a free audiobook by going to audible.com slash serious. Whether, whatever fires your imagination or quickens your pulse, you'll find it at Audible. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible app for your smartphone or tablet and turn anytime into story time. Listening during your commute, while you work out, while you're cooking, or anytime your hands are busy, but your mind is free, man. Go to audible.com slash serious if you love books, but just can't find the time to read them. Or don't love to read, but love a great story. Get listening. Go to audible.com slash serious. Start your 30-day trial, and your first audiobook is free. Try it today at audible.com slash serious. Certain shows come along that challenge the way we think, the way we see the world, the way we connect and care for one another. The Star's original series, Ash vs. Evil Dead, is not one of those shows. Want to see a guy with a chainsaw hand battle demonic creatures called Deadites while he's half drunk and full of offenses? This is the show, then. Bruce Campbell returns as Ash Williams in the long-awaited follow-up to the classic horror film franchise, The Evil Dead. The second season roars back in action with Ash leaving his beloved bikini-clad Jacksonville Beach and returning to his now-possessed hometown of Elk Grove, Michigan. 
starring Bruce Campbell, Lucy Lawless, and a bunch of kick-ass demon killers. This season promises to be the bloodiest fucking thing on TV. So load your shotguns and polish your chainsaws, because open season on Deadite starts October 2nd at 8 p.m. on Stars. Don't have Stars? Just download the Stars app and start your free trial today. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Your eyes are dry. Helps to see with my precision <laughs> on the same bright star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, if they cut him in, I would just, love it. James Ingram just comes and kicks the mouse off stage. <laughs> Get out of here, you furry little faggot. Somewhere. <laughs> Jacob, new plan. Can you dress in fame clothes and sing somewhere out there by five mouse? <laughs> 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 Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson all the way in Los Angeles, California. And then mm -hmm. in the in the studio with me is Nick Turner, whose Comedy Central half hour special premieres this Friday, twelve thirty. Uh, yeah, it's Friday night into Saturday morning. You get and it. his debut album, Yelling, also available this Friday as well on Comedy Central Records. And I'm gonna be straight chilling all weekend. You be straight chilling all weekend. Just straight chilling. Come well, say hi. Straight chilling. Applying to continuation schools. No, I couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I did too much high school. You've done too much high schooling. Yeah. You can't build this go pad motor. And I don't know any of the songs from Greece, yeah. so I wasn't able to oh, well, participate. Oh, lightning goes. oh, Danny. Yeah. If I can give you a, a follow up, by the way, I watched briefly. You didn't follow any of this John Bonet stuff, right? Or you did? I watched. I watched the first episode. I haven't watched the second episode. Um, Dr. Phil, your fave. Of course. The executive producer of the Amber <laughs> Rose show. <laughs> That's probably my highest title. I put that piece of sweet ass on TV. I got Brandon, her homie, working in my house now. Her friend Big is my security, so I'll just pop off at the mouth. I'll just go <laughs> into the hood. I'll look at some straight up thug, and I'll be like, dude, suck my dick. This is my I'll homie to, Big. I'll go to a sailor bar and say your outfits look like faggots. And then I'll just go like this. And I'll, I'm going to take a beer in your dumb hat. <laughs> Do something about it, pussy. Poontang. Poontang. Um, you guys are off the boat getting some poon tang. Uh, um, Dr. Phil interviewed the brother, who now they're now saying is obviously, you know, the one that seemed to have done it. Yeah. And this kid did himself no service, man. Gig, like, like weird looking. Everything he did to try to look normal makes him look more crazy. He's got the collar coming out of the sweater. Look. We'll have to take a look at this. Uh, I'll tell you what. I promise you this. He had to have regret bringing that rat. And petting it the whole interview. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> <I think. laughs> well, sometimes, you know, rats are some of the smartest creatures on the planet. I yeah. don't understand why you keep bringing up this rat, but it upsets me. I think we'll uh, I think we'll break that down next week when okay. we see. I, I so want to say we, if you get a chance to catch up to that, but we have to get to, of course, at least this voicemail. Yeah, let's do it. We know, we all know what happened. Corey Feldman was on the Today Show with the Angels. We know that. Didn't go well. He got angry. Yep. Everyone made fun of him. He got sad. Everyone apologized. He got angry live? Mm, not really, but I mean, there's no way you could be happy with that performance. <laughs> okay. I don't know. All right. Well, I'm thinking he got angry because we got this voicemail. Let's just play it. We didn't even listen to it. So who well, what Does it explain in the voicemail what happens? I don't know. I, what does it say, Jacob? You got the what's, info. What, what, what's the story that happened? Why is this even a thing, this voicemail? Corey was yeah. very upset because an angel quit. An angel quit. Yeah, Corey's didn't, angels didn't show up at a gig. Didn't show up at a gig. Instead, tried getting a bus out of the hellacious life it's known being a Corey's angel. Left them high no. and dry. She um, quit four days before the performance. She was a musician, and it was like they were supposed to rehearse, and they wanted her to stay with them and the main angel, Courtney. She thought it was going to be sexual, but nothing was like explicitly talked about. She said nobody was disrobing. She kind of thought that it was going to end up being a joke and didn't want to be a part <laughs> of it and quit on him. She does say uh, that she said that it was going to be a shit show and an embarrassment, 
and that Feldman, Feldman's dancing during rehearsals was distracting. I couldn't look at him. That's so funny. That I just imagine she's it's like... Funny cause, it's funny because I can't take my goddamn eyes off him. I just imagine her playing guitar uh, behind a stack of things like Prince. She just doesn't come out while Feldman's <laughs> dancing. <laughs> Can I just get the hierarchy on angels real quick? It's Victoria's secret angels. Yeah, it's bottom. Then bitch. blue angels. Yes. Then hell's angels. Yes. Then Corey's Char- angels. Char- Charlie's angels. Oh, Charlie's angels. angels. Then Corey. Then Corey's angels. Okay, yes. good. Got you it. it. It's heaven's angels first. <laughs> heaven's angels. Uh, the, Victoria's uh, secret uh, angels. Uh, uh, Satan, who was also an angel. Fallen uh, angels. Oh, fallen angels. Yeah. Fallen angels. And Angel, the series. And the Anaheim was, Angels. I was going to say, we get the Anaheim Angels in there. <laughs> yeah. We all, oh, and then I, <laughs> But all we know for sure is that Corey's Angels is at the bottom. It's near also, the bottom. No, right behind it, Angel Soft, <laughs> Angel Soft toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> because, uh, because I'll be honest with you, it falls apart. <laughs> Yeah. First wipe crumbles <laughs> crumbles right in your BH crumbles. It is a waste of time, and then you're just gonna have little like rolled up. I use it. I never. I never need that second swipe because I'm so good at the first one. You just nail it. I always get it. You just like leave it up there. Yeah, I think probably. You don't. You don't even look at the paper. You just know it's angel soft, and you're good to go. G to G. True. All right, let's play the voicemail. Okay, so it's Corey. I'm. I'm wanting to believe that this is a joke. Uh, uh, just kind of like my musical career. Real. Sorry, we're gonna be stopping this a lot. <laughs> we got. Sorry, we're gonna have to restart that because I, I can't not hear him without wanting to make fun of it. Chris, so it's Corey. I'm I'm wanting to believe that this is a joke. Uh, you got to be joking, right? This isn't real. Like no human being on this earth would be selfish enough and egotistical enough and fucked up in the head enough to fuck friends over like this at the last minute. Like, you know that I spent real money and you know that I'm struggling and you know how hard it has been to get to this point. And like no person would do this to another group of people that they call friends unless you're like a soulless, careless, like inhumane fucking piece of shit. No. So I really Okay, well, you know, he actually kind of does have a point in a weird way. I'm on Corey's side on this. I'm looking at her picture, and she looks like a soulless piece of shit. <laughs> no, that's just without makeup. Oh, oh, that's fair. That yeah. is fair. This is a can- it, is a, it is a candid shot. Yeah, if she had bass and toner, I think you would think she was actually a little yeah. bit better than She'd a be real a good piece person. Of shit. I'd let her babysit. Yeah. Yeah, if she was more uh, even complected. You're right, yeah. Hey, it's Corey. I just want to make sure you left your wings behind. Those are a pretty (laughs) penny. I can't really just let you keep the wings. I'll send for my wings. (laughs) Also, you know, uh, yeah, you kind of have the keys to my house. (laughs) I need you to give back all my signed Corey Hain memorabilia. Also, uh, you're not invited to the Lost Boys Live party I was going to have next month. I had to pull that back. (laughs) <laughs> I wish I forget the name of the guy. I used to know the name of one of the guys who played one of the smaller vampires. Would have been great if he was going to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys ALS been... Press and Esquire was going to be there. You but... guys try calling Corey Feldman? No, we don't want him on the show. <laughs> no, he, he kind of put out on Twitter that he would come on the show. And uh, we, got, we started to ignore it because we're like, then we can't really I do see. this. We can't do this fun. then. Yeah, it's like, that, it's like when a guy wears a uh, Make America Great hat again in, the, in your front row. You can't talk about it. Yeah. That's yeah, all he well, wants. It's, you know, it's, it's just one of the... Exactly. But it's no, it's not all he wants. The thing is, if it makes sense, me and sort of explained this before, but uh, I respect him at, at, for a lot of the things he has done. I do love the Lost Boys. And then, you know, Stand By Me, the Goonies... So I don't want to just clown on a guy that's just completely off his rocker. And I've heard a few people, I don't know how inside it is or how much it really means or how many these people actually know him, but they say he really is like a hardcore, like ne- like never stop doing drugs. Do you know what I mean? Like he's not that he's like a uh, all day long like junkie of any kind, they're saying, but he just like he's just removed because he's always just kind of done drugs and drank. You know, he's never like given that stuff up at all. Yeah. Hearsay, by the way. Okay. All hearsay. So let's play the rest of the message. It was like inhumane fucking piece of shit. Okay. So I really hope for all fucking practical purposes that this is a fucking elaborate joke and that you're going to call and say that this was all a joke or you were just playing. Or he something. really wants this to be a joke. Can you erase all of my dick pics that I sent you? Also, real quick, like, I, 
I really want this to be a joke. I don't know if you know this, but I'm really leaning and I'm hoping. And I'm just like, I want to be a joke. Only a soulless twat piece of cunt shit that's fucking dis a disgrace <laughs> to her family and everybody she knows would do something like this. Only a so woman. I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is a joke and you're showing up today. I assume that you're a human that poops out of her butt and not her mouth like a soulless twat would if you were, if this was a joke. Street garbage cunt whore fuck slut pig bitch. <laughs> Hopefully this is just a joke and you'll show up today. Also, I'm going to murder your family if you don't. But I hope this is a joke and you'll be there and I won't have to take a hunting knife to your dear father's throat. From the gutters of your mom's pussy, piece of shit garbage, <laughs> fuck bag, ball bust, piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he knows who he's talking to, but this girl it plays with blues, mu blues musician Guitar Shorty. So yeah, you better watch his tone. She's got gigs. Yeah, let's see the rest of the. Oh, she's a, plays the instrument. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's in the band. Okay. Well, the angels are always they, they have to know, they have to learn three chords and be willing to suck his dick at a moment's notice. Just like any ro good rock star. Yeah. Yes. The same. Uh, I think Scott Stapp from Creed had the same thing with his band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll get down. <laughs> Another great guy to have on the show oh. who definitely stopped doing drugs. Yeah, he. I, yeah. yeah, dude. Oh, by the way, so I, I did forget to tell you this. I really forgot to tell you this, and it bums me out. Uh, our friend Sam Pritchell told me this actually. Yeah. At um, this weekend in in Texas when I saw her, we just didn't know the name because it wasn't so mainstream at that point. Yeah. Corey and the Corey and the Angels. You are aware that we just chose one day to miss a Corey and the Angels nighttime performance at Bonnaroo while we were at Bonnaroo. What the fuck did you just say yep. to me? Yep, this girl on the voicemail was in that performance. <gasps> yeah. I mean, I was being bullied by a beautiful woman, so I don't know you if are. I would have had the time to go see that performance. You are. What you need to do, you need to get your Corey Feldman pimp hand stronger. Maybe you get a fucking bin place. Hey, listen, I know you don't want to go to the sound booth during Alabama Shakes, but it's a long way down at the stage. And if you don't go with me, there's one or two ways to find out. Hey, I'll tell you what. You're getting off this scaffolding with me momentarily. Front end or back end? <laughs> I recommend the back end. You saw my strength in the pool. <laughs> uh, play the rest. It was all a joke, or you were just playing, or something. Because if I don't fucking hear from you, girl, your name is fucking Mud. Let me tell you, mud? don't even My name, name is Mud. My name is Mud. Hey, it's Corey Feldman. I'm a huge Primus guy. Uh, <laughs> turns out Les Claypool wanted nothing to do with my music. But, <laughs> fun story. I sent them all 14 of my albums. And I go like this. Hey, Les, is it cool if I cover all of pork soda? When, when fucking, uh, when Corey Feldman did that shit on the talk, when he started showing them, like, oh, by the way, here's my 14 albums I've made. It's kind of like, isn't that when a, a comic like, isn't very good yet, but they start, like, telling, like, how long they've been doing it? You're like, ah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> it's, all, it's, all things, it's all things like, you think, he's like, he's like, you think that was shitty on the Today Show, but I've been at this for a while. Like, I think I know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? When a yeah. comic's been doing it, like, eight years, like, I've been at it for eight years, and you're like, mm, you know, sure. I thought you were doing, I thought you started yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you should change that, to, you should change it to six months, buddy. Yeah, I've been doing this now, shit, 22 years now. <laughs> Since Nixon. At 85, I released my first vinyl single. <laughs> it was called Dance Away. Actually, it was. I don't know. Let's do the rest of the message. Let me tell you, don't even bother coming back to L.A. Because you'll never get another gig in that fucking town. Yes. Ever. He said like, I will fucking make sure everybody knows what a piece of shit you are. I am three. Cool. I am three calls away from telling Hal Sparks you are not cool. <laughs> yeah. If it's a good day, I might be able to get a hold of Mark McGrath. I, I don't know. <laughs> I I met one of the guys from Steel Panther last week. I bet he probably can tell a peep person or two not to let you into that one club. Blanket Jackson, I think that's her name. Blanket Jackson. I don't know Michael's <laughs> child's name, but they. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can get a call into them. Is that the end of the... I get a call. That's it. That's it? He just hangs up? He just tells her he's never going to work again? He might say goodbye. Okay. He said goodbye? Check it. Corey Feldman pulling a fucking... Hold on. You'll never work in this town again. You got... Fucking make sure everybody knows what a piece of shit you are. Okay? Cool, peace. What do you say? Okay. Okay, cool, K, cool peace. peace.
Okay. So she immediately released this. Yeah. 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 I lo- I was just golden. Yeah. She's listening to this, just laughing. She goes, oh, She's already idiot. got it on speakerphone. She goes, by the way, seriously, Allison, listen to this. <laughs> Allison, you saw Goonies, right? Listen to this. <laughs> this was the guy I was no, working with. No, the dirtier one. No, not the one. The one with the comb. Yeah. You, re- you remember that kid who used to dress like Michael Jackson? Him. Yeah, no, the guy I was working for. If she, she had a Lou in her life, she like could... Michael Jackson. Yeah. If she... He still dresses like Michael Jackson. He still... Dan- when the guy on the Today Show calls him on that, he goes, well, it's inspired because we were really close friends. Oh, man. <laughs> on, do- still... on, on Dr. Oz, on Dr. Oz, a soda, just a little preview here, he's going to explain uh, why him and Michael Jackson had a falling out, and it's because Michael stopped trusting people. Well, of course, and I understand that Amber Rose barely trusts me. I had to sneak up on her when she's sleeping. She doesn't trust me. I had to put, punch holes in the walls of her change room. Just she so won't I, even let me in the door anymore. I have to go through like Jack Nicholson in The Shine, and it scares the shit out of her. Hey, here's Philly. Oh, let me see that sweet badunka dunk. Soder, these shows somehow fly when we are not near each other. I know, but we're going to be near each other next week. And this week, check out Nick Turner's premiere album, Yelling. On Comedy Central Radio. And Friday. On Friday. And There's his some out. talking in it. There's talking in it? So a couple of talk. Okay. Some talking, mostly yelling. Yeah. On Comedy Central Records. And then make sure you check out his half hour special on Comedy Central at 1230. At It's Me, Nick, uh, Nikki T. Yeah. Uh, no. You changed at it? At Nick's Turner's. Oh, yes. You changed I changed it. it. I changed it like four years ago. You son of a bitch. I know. I'm so sorry. It at sucks. Nick's it's not Turner's a good one. I regret it. At Big J, special special comes out. Said twelve thirty Friday. Uh, Twitch is actually Friday into Saturday. But yeah. make sure you set your DVRs if nothing else and check it out. Nick is absolutely fucking hilarious. Yeah, if you follow us on the bonfire, uh, the bonfire SXM, uh, you'll see we have links to everything and, and reminders of when it's going to be coming up there. Nick, thanks for hanging out with us, buddy. Thank you, sir. Jay, I and, love uh, you. I love you too. And wait, Danny. Yeah. You got some stuff coming up too. You're going to be at Rogue Island Comedy Festival in Newport, Rhode Island next week. It's going to be so fun. And also, and also, uh, Saturday, October 8th, you can catch Danny at Laugh It Up Comedy Club in Poughkeepsie, New York. Go to dansoda.com for tickets. And check out for- oddballfest.com to catch the last three shows of Oddball Fest with Big J. He's going to be on at oddballfest.com. Mountain View, Irvine, and Phoenix coming up this weekend. So make sure you check that out. I miss you, buddy. Until uh, then, I'll be running towards you. I'll be running towards you. Let's meet in Missouri. Missouri. Everyone, we'll catch you next Very week. Cool, Pete. On the bonfire. Jacob, go cut up that sweatshirt.